Table tennis is more commonly known as ping pong. Folding table tennis tables are popular in homes and kept outdoors because they can be closed up and rolled out of the way. These tables can also fold down on just one side, allowing for solo play. This high-end outdoor table tennis table has an aluminum bottom that prevents the tabletop, called the plate, from warping or splitting due to expansion and contraction. A press stamps cups into a sheet of aluminum. This pattern creates nearly equal areas both in contact and out of contact with the rest of the plate layers, providing flexibility to withstand temperature-related movement. Each table needs two embossed aluminum sheets one for each half of the plate. A technician assembles frames for the plate halves out of square extruded aluminum tubes cut to the lengths and widths of the plate half perimeter. An automated milling machine makes miter cuts, which allow the tubes to be made into rectangles. Then the technician moves the frames onto a rotating fixture and welds the corners together. The frames are inserted into a brushing machine. Inside, wire brush rollers allow the aluminum surface to become rough. This helps the components to adhere to one another. Another technician places the embossed aluminum sheet into a rectangular assembly jig and adds the brushed aluminum frame. A conveyor transfers the jig to the next station. Then the jig connects with an 8 mm thick sheet of particle board made of wood chips and glue. The board is coated with a heat-activated adhesive film on both sides. At the next station, an aluminum sheet is placed on top of the particle board. This step completes the plate component assembly. Next, the conveyor loads the jig into a press. Once 12 jigs have been loaded onto the press, it heats to 239 degrees Fahrenheit and compresses them for about 10 minutes. This process activates the adhesive and bonds the components of each plate into a single unit, one framed plate half. Each plate half goes through an automated milling machine. The machine trims any excess material from all four sides to ensure the table won't have any sharp edges. The plate half goes through a paint machine, then into an oven. The process repeats, applying a second coat of paint and a UV-resistant clear coat. A machine applies paint through a screen stencil, printing the lines that mark the boundaries of the playing surface. After the paint is dried in an oven, a team places the finished plate half in a cardboard box and attaches folding legs to the base. The factory mills the legs in-house out of high tensile steel, then finishes them in baked on paint. The net, along with several components, are packed and made in-house, which the consumer later assembles to the table. Components include the net posts, side panels, wheels, wheel brakes, and the ball return box. Finally, the plate half is transferred to an automated system, which completes the packaging. Many ping pong tables on the market require the net to be removed every time you fold the table. The design of this table enables the net to remain in place, whether the table is folded for storage or has one or both sides open for playing. Less setup time means more time to play.
Plastic model kits were developed before World War II, when people became interested in seeing machines in small-scale replication. Today, plastic model kits continue to offer building opportunities to hobbyists who love the challenge of putting little pieces together. With a plastic model kit, a colossal ocean liner can be replicated in small scale. Built with nearly 2,000 pieces, assembly is all about the details. Each model kit starts with extensive research and design, a process that can take up to a year to complete and cost up to $100,000. Using the computer design, a set of steel molds is made for every piece of the kit. Tools carve into steel chunks to make the molds. Precision work done entirely by machinery. Installed in large dies, the molds are linked by channels. Melted plastic will flow through the channels to fill the molds. Clear polystyrene is used for transparent components. The melted polystyrene is pumped under high pressure into the molds. Once the plastic hardens, a pusher ejects the parts. The connected kit parts are known as a tree. The opaque polystyrene pellets are used to form the other kit parts and are molded separately. The scale of the parts is 1 to 24, which means the model will be 1 24th the size of the original. Since the manufacturing is automated, the risk of contamination is reduced. Next, the tree is put through a technical analysis test. The technician photographs the tree and compares it to an image already fit to scale. If some parts haven't taken shape, or if they're only partially formed, more pressure may be needed to ensure that the polystyrene flows into all the mold cavities. A technician compares a randomly selected tree to the design and verifies that no parts are poorly formed or missing. Once the confirmation is obtained, the technician slides the model kit parts into a clear plastic sleeve. Before it's ready for retail, the kit needs a set of illustrated instructions. The designer deconstructs the model and then reconstructs it on his computer as he draws up the instructions. With the instruction manual complete, a team packs all the components of the model kit in a box. One of each of the kit trees is placed in each box. The kit also includes decals and large separately molded parts like the ocean liner hull. A technician closes the box. As it moves down a conveyor, a laser prints the date of production and the batch number on the side. Then the box is wrapped in plastic and the ends are sealed with heat guns. A year of planning has gone into making the plastic mold kit, but it took less than 10 minutes to mold the kit parts and package them. Building the model will take 10 to 12 hours. The factory does a test build on each model to confirm that it comes together as planned. This is the iconic Constellation aircraft, a World War II military transport plane that was later converted to a commercial airliner. Assembling a plastic model kit can be a great learning experience for the builder. Decals mimic the ID information on the outside of the original aircraft. These decals have been pre-treated with adhesive. Soaking the decals in water activates them. The assembler brushes more water onto the design spots on the model and applies the decals to the dampened spots. As the glue dries, they adhere to each other. The plastic models can also be painted before the decals are applied for a refined and clean look that really comes together.